Hi there, welcome back to Bible 101 Lesson 9. This is part 3 for our videos, part 2 in the lesson guide, What Do I Receive in the Lord's Supper? So we're going to look at three main teachings about what we receive in the Lord's Supper. Christianity is really um, broken into about three camps on what happens with the Lord's Supper. Uh, real presence, transubstantiation, and representation are the three. So what we'll do today is we'll kind of look at some passages from God's Word, and uh, I'll explain what each of these um, groups, first of all, kind of says about what you receive in the Lord's Supper, and then we'll look at what the Bible says and see which one is the biblical teaching of what you receive in the Lord's Supper. So first, um, yeah, without without giving any... Um, uh, any nod into what one, one is the correct one. I'll just start with real presence on this side and say what they teach. So um, the, those who teach real presence, they say that what, what you're eating and drinking is actually um, bread and wine. So they, you actually receive in your mouth bread and wine. And then, in a miraculous way that goes beyond understanding, they also say that you receive in your mouth the true body and blood of Jesus. So, both of those things are really present. The real presence. You receive in your mouth, bread and wine is really there, and also in a miraculous way, the body and blood of Jesus. Um... So, then, uh, next one is transubstantiation. Those who treat, teach transubstantiation, it kind of comes from a Latin word. Um, trans means it goes across uh, substan substance, you can see in that word. So, a changing of substance. So, they teach that you do not uh, actually receive the bread and wine in the Lord's Supper. Uh, but when the when the pastor says the says the words, there's a change that happens, and it still looks like bread and wine, but in essence, it's not. What you're actually receiving is the body and blood of Jesus. But there's been a complete change, and now essentially, what you really receive is Jesus' body and blood, but not the bread and wine anymore. Um, representation. Pretty easy to understand that there's representing going on. So those who teach this say, well, um, you, you receive bread and wine. That's pretty obvious. Those are in front of you. You put them in your mouth. You eat them and drink them. But the bread and wine only represent Jesus' true body and blood. Jesus isn't actually giving the entire world who's receiving this his his body and blood, but he wants us to think about the price he paid for our salvation, his body and blood. So you don't actually receive Jesus' body and blood, but only the bread and wine, which represents Jesus' body and blood. So those are, those are three teachings within Christianity, real presence, transubstantiation, and representation. Well, let's look at a couple Bible passages that remind us of what the Bible says um, about the Lord's Supper. And, and there's more, but we'll look at these. Um, first one here is 1 Corinthians 10, verse 16. Is not the cup of thanksgiving for which we give thanks a participation in the blood of Christ? And is not the bread that we break a participation in the the body of Christ. So here we see that Paul mentions both this cup of thanksgiving, the, the cup of blessing that would have been raised and, and consumed at the Passover meal, this cup of wine, and he's saying that is a participation in the blood of Christ. It's, it's connected with, it is in common with, it's together with the blood of Christ. And the bread that we break is a participation in the body of Christ. It is together with, it's in common with, it's in fellowship with, it's, it's in, it's with, it's under the body of Christ. So 
here we see that really all the things are mentioned, the bread, the wine, the body, and the blood. But Jesus' true body and blood are really there. The bread and wine is participating with them. It's there. So it can't be representation because they say the body and blood is not present. But Paul says it is. It's a participation in the body of in the body and blood of Christ. 1 Corinthians 11.27 continues, Therefore, whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and blood of the Lord. Here we see all of them mentioned again. Paul's talking about the Lord's Supper, and he says, What are we eating? What are we drinking? Whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord... So they're eating bread and wine. He's, again, calling it bread and wine. Whoever eats the bread, they're eating bread and drinking wine. So it can't be transubstantiation. They say there's no bread and wine, but Paul continually refers to this as bread and wine. But if they do that in an unworthy manner, what are they sinning against? The body and blood of Jesus, which is also there. So real presence is what the Bible points to. Remember, we looked last time, it says, this is my body, this is my blood. These are uh, just moments before Jesus is going to go to the cross and die. He's giving his last will and testament to his disciples. He's leaving them with something, and what does he leave them with? Himself, his true body and blood. Jesus pays for their sins with the cost of his body hung on the cross and his blood shed for our forgiveness. And he lets us taste and see that he is good, that he has forgiven our sins by giving us his body and blood. He, he's not being metaphorical with his words here. He's being very clear with his disciples. Take and eat. This is my body. This is my blood. It's a participation with my body and blood. And if you eat or drink this in an unworthy manner, you're sinning against my body and blood that are there. So real presence is the biblical teaching that Jesus clearly says these four elements are there. Um, how does it all work? I, I, don't, I don't completely know how Jesus does that, but Jesus is God. He can give us something that is so simple and yet so profound that he gives us himself. These other teachings also uh, lead to some, to some false practices and misunderstandings about the Bible, too. Um, some who practice representation, uh, Methodist churches, Baptist churches, non-denominational churches, um, mainline American Christianity, a lot of them teach representation. And they're letting their, their rational thought come before God's word, where it says, but I, I can't understand how Jesus could give people uh, for centuries, his body and blood, does, does he run out of his body and blood? How does he physically do this? Well, let God's word speak and follow what God's word says. And if God is clear about it, he, he's God. He can do this. Uh, there's also a misunderstanding that, well, Jesus is at the right hand of God. How can his body and blood um, be given for us in the sacrament? Well, the right hand of God, where Jesus is, is picture language. That it's, a, it's a picture of the, the right hand is a symbol of power for the king. So Jesus is ruling uh, from at the right hand of God. Not a physical place, but a position of power. Um, yeah, and Jesus is still true God and true man and, and able to give us his body and blood. Now, it, again, it's a miracle in how he does this. It's not like we can put it under a microscope and see it. We trust God's word and what he says and the forgiveness he gives. Transubstantiation can lead to some other uh, problems, too, that there's a complete change um, because uh, those who teach this are um, the Catholic Church, Eastern Orthodox Church, Anglican Church, and they would say that once this changes, it stays changed. It's, it's Jesus' body and blood and will be forevermore. Uh, we recognize that when the sacrament is being given, we're receiving all four things, and, and after that, uh, it's, it's all within the eating and drinking and hearing the words of Jesus that this happens, but it doesn't stay body and blood forever after that. Uh, but one thing that happened in the Catholic Church is that they would um, essentially worship the leftover wafers because that was the body of Jesus. You think of the, um, the Corpus Christi Festival or Mardi Gras 
was when they decided um, the day before Lent is when we'll take all the leftover wafers that, that haven't been eaten that we've set aside because this is the body of Jesus and then, and then we'll burn them in a, in a more respectful way. But it also led to a lot of sin leading up to, to Lent. Um, yeah, more on that if you ever want to talk about it another time. But what the Bible clearly says is that there's these four things and that we receive them all with our mouth in a miraculous way. Um, so you just think, like, how, how much is the body and blood of Jesus worth? This is, this is priceless. And he's, he's giving it to us. Because what, what are we worth in God's eyes? We're priceless. He wants us to um, have this, this true body and blood of Jesus for our forgiveness and to treat it with respect and accept what God says in his word.